Hello, everyone. So today I am delighted to be joined by Dr. Alejandra Juante from Mexico. And uh, Alejandra is a medical doctor, a homeopath, and an energy healer. She's also a teacher at Ana Anahuac Med School, which is one of the most uh, prestigious universities in Mexico. And she also works at Centro Suma. And I'm sure she'll tell us all about what uh, Centro Suma is. First of all, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me here today. I'm pleased and grateful. <laughs> so as I ask everybody, when I first start doing these interviews, I think it's a really nice thing for people to hear is, first of all, as much as you would like to share about your background, and then also, when was the awakening, as I call it, experience for you? When did you realize that things are not as we thought they were? Well, my story began quite a long time ago when I was seven years old. And to make a long story short, I had tonsils infections very, very frequently, like every month. So after a year of having infections, someone, my pediatrician, had the idea to take away my tonsils. So I had a surgery. And after that, I started having sinus. So chronic sinus in a seven-year-old girl. So every time with antibiotics and nasal wash and stuff like that. And my mom was like, this is not a life for a seven or an eight-year-old girl. So after a year of treatment, someone told my mom, why don't you take her to the homeopath? My mom had no idea what was that, who was that, <laughs> what was that about. But anyways, she didn't have anything to lose. So she took me to the homeopath. The homeopath gave me these pills, these homeopath uh, pills. And within the first take or first dose, all the symptoms were, went away. No more runny nose, no more headaches, no more anything. So my mom was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And well, of course, I was a kid and I couldn't decide on what kind of treatment I could have. So my mom sometimes took me to the homeopath and sometimes took me to the pediatrician. And years later, I started studying medicine and I saw that I healed faster when I took homeopathy than when I took antibiotics. So I also saw that patients in the hospitals took longer to heal than when I was sick. When I took homeopathy, I healed faster. So I asked my homeopath, what happens? What, why is it that I heal faster? Is it me? No, he said, it's homeopathy because homeopathy really heals from the inside. It doesn't suppress the symptoms like allopathy, but it really heals. So oh, I started to get interested in that. So the years went on and I had like this idea to study homeopathy, but um. I became pregnant with my first baby and I started bleeding. I had, I was six weeks of pregnancy and I started having this bleeding. I went with my best friend who made the ultrasounds and he was like, oh, you're going to lose the baby. The placenta is not well attached. You have like this huge bruise on the placenta. So you're going to lose the baby. And I was like, no, you're wrong. So I talked to my OBGYN and she was like, oh my God, you've had these big bruises on the placenta. I don't think the baby's going to make it. So uh, at rest, uh, get on the bed for two weeks and let's see what happens. So I hung up with her and called my homeopath and said, this is what it's happening. And he said, take Arnica. Arnica is the most famous homeopathy uh, remedy in the world. I think everybody knows it. So I took my Arnica, as he told me to, and two weeks later, I went to the ultrasound with my best friend, and he was checking me, and he was like, what did you do? What kind of witchcraft did you do? The um, bruise is gone. The placenta is perfectly attached. The baby is growing. Everything is perfect. And I was like, oh, my God, just two weeks taking, taking Arnica. And I didn't have an abortion. And I have a baby growing in me. So that day, I decided I wanted to learn about homeopathy. 
I treat myself and my kids, my family with homeopathy. So that was like a very important um, a point in my life. So years passed and I went to homeopathy school. I had this specialty on homeopathy and then I also have a master's degree on homeopathy. So that was 16 years ago. And since then, I haven't taken any allopathy anymore. My kids don't take antibiotics. And so we are healthier. And on this journey on homeopathy, I remember on first semester, one of the doctors said, So that was like the first time I ever heard that. Of course, they don't teach you that in med school. They just teach you like the vaccine schedule. You just have to learn it and that's it. But I began like, oh my God, that's very interesting. So I got pregnant of my second child and I bought a lot of books about vaccines and I started learning about Oh my God. So that's when I started like learning all about vaccines. And the, this was like my awakening, my health awakening, because you didn't have to take antibiotics to heal. You didn't need allopathy to heal. And there were other ways to heal. So I was on the homeopathy um, path. <laughs> and that's what I decided to heal with. And I also decided not and my kids are very, very, very healthy. They get, I don't know, maybe flu a couple of times a year and that's it. Of course, I, I gave them their homeopathy and they heal very, very fast. So years have passed, have passed and COVID appeared. <laughs> and Oh, well, uh, before COVID appeared, I started um, uh, knowing about energy medicine. I got with, um, a Mind Valley course that it's called Energy Medicine by Donna Eden. And I bought two of her books and I started learning about energy medicine. Uh, since I was a kid, I, I, wa I was like very sensitive to energies from other people. So when I started um, studying this, now I know why everybody's energy, we're made out of energy and we can feel the um, other people's energy. So I started like, oh, that's why I feel uh, sad sometimes when I'm close to a person that is sad, of, or that's why I'm angry when I'm close to a person that is angry, because of the energy that we can share. So I started um, studying this energy in medicine about uh, meridians and energy and, well, and a lot of energy uh, paths that we have. And suddenly I started seeing the aura from other people. So now I knew what was an aura and I could uh, see it from other people. And that's uh, very nice because sometimes I can see my patient's aura and I can know what the problem is. And I can feel sometimes like the symptoms my patient is having within me. Like, uh, I don't know if the patient is having a sore throat Suddenly I start having a sore throat and I ask him, oh, do you have a sore throat? Oh, right. I forgot to tell you. So that's really useful, <laughs> a very nice tool to have for me to help my patients so I can feel what they are feeling, what they are having, and then I can uh, say, uh, tell the remedies easier. Okay. So, well, then COVID appeared and I started feeling since the very beginning that like all these rules were absurd and they were like meaningless. So of course I <laughs> didn't want to wear masks and my kids don't want to wear masks because it, it, it didn't make sense to me, right?
So it was very odd for me like to follow these rules. So uh, I became like this uh, aware of all the things that were happening and starting looking for answers. So one of the answers was also when the vaccine appeared, the COVID vaccine appeared that it was made. Why don't we have freedom to choose? If I can be free to choose my religion or my diet or my car, why can't I be? So that's when I started looking for more information and uh, found a lot of people who also was on, like on this part of, of the knowledge, a lot of people who were aware that this pandemic was So there's a very famous um, uh, investigator here, a researcher here in Mexico, La Doctora Karina Acevedo, and I started following her, her work, and she's been saying since three years ago that so, uh, and that's when I also found you, Positive News, and that's something that I'm very interested to do because we always have to see the good part or the positive part of everything. Everything is a lesson. Even this pandemic is a lesson for every one of us. And maybe the biggest lesson is that we have to fight for our freedom. Thank you for the compliment about finding COVID positive news as well. Um, one thing that I'm wondering though is in the medical profession, so you're also a medical doctor in Mexico, um, what has been the experience for you bringing into the medical practice, first of all, homeopathy, and then also energy healing, and then perhaps we'll move on to the COVID story. But first of all, homeopathy and energy healing. Are you allowed to talk about those at the hospital with your colleagues or do you keep those to yourself or what is it like in a Mexican um, hospital? Okay, so here in Mexico, homeopathy, uh, it's a, like a regulated specialty and you have to be a medical doctor in order to study homeopathy. So it's like if you study surgery or pediatrics or anything like that, you have like these number of a specialty okay so you can study homeopathy although um not a lot of people believe in homeopathy uh, we have a homeopathy hospital it's a very very big hospital here well in mexico city and there are other hospitals and there are a lot of homeopathy clinics all around mexico but not a lot of people believe in homeopathy so in the allopathy world, it's very difficult to be like accepted. Uh, I started working at Centro Suma, uh, which is a cleft lip and palate center for kids that have no money and could not afford uh, the surgeries. So uh, I have been working for there for 16 years now. And when I started there, I only started like a medical doctor. And then um, I started studying medicine while I was, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I started uh, studying homeopathy while I was working there. So I started uh, telling my colleagues, could I give homeopathy to this kid? But they didn't believe that it worked. They say it like, oh, they are just sugar pills. They don't work. But suddenly they started seeing that it worked. <laughs> So the biggest uh, work I do there is um, when there's like a palate surgery and for any reason the wound opens, usually they have to take the kid to another surgery to close the, that wound. But if I give them homeopathy, the wound closes without any other surgery. <laughs> So I started working on that and the surgeons, the plastic surgeons were like, oh my God, I can't believe that you're giving these sugar pills or these little pills 
and the wound closes like magic. So that way they allow me to work with homeopathy. I'm the only homeopath that works on the cleft lip palate centers of all Mexico, all the country. <laughs> but now they see that there's a change with this, that they can't avoid a surgery. I mean, a surgery, it's a big deal. So what if I give these remedies and the wounds close faster? I also help the, the dentist to close the, to the teeth uh, faster for the surgeons to work better for the surgeries, especially for the lip, um, for the cleft lip surgery. So I give them um, uh, homeopathic remedies for the, like the maxilla to close and it's faster for them to make the surgery. Instead of taking six months of um, some treatments, orthodontal, orthodontic uh, uh, things on, in their mouth, maybe they can make the surgery in four months. So it's faster. So now they can see that homeopathy works. They can see that homeopathy can heal the kids faster. And even in their private practices, they send me their patients like, oh my God, can you give them something so they can close the wounds faster? Of course. So now they see that it works, but that's with the group I work with. And of course, we are like 50 people working that at Centro Suma, but all the other doctors outside Centro Suma don't believe in homeopathy and don't see the work that can be done with it. So it's very hard to be a homeopath in a country where everybody thinks that allopathy is the only uh, way to heal. So it's been really hard. So talking about something else, I also teach, like you said, I also teach at med school at Universidad Anahuac. I have been giving classes for the last nine years. I started teaching about homeopathy because they wanted uh, for med students to know a different way to heal and not only allopathy, it's not the only way. So I started teaching homeopathy and for the last years, I also teach about alternative and integrative uh, medicine. And there I talk about acupuncture, medicine plants, homeopathy, energy medicine, tapping, and every other way to heal because there's not only allopathy, there are different ways to heal and to be well. So I teach that also for them to be aware that there are different ways to heal. So that is also important uh, of my, that's part of my job <laughs> in this world to start helping med students to know different ways to heal. Wow, all I can say is, you know, I've started organizing some of these interviews like I did with you through the community at CPN. And I'm meeting some fascinating people. And, you know, I'm now talking to possibly the only doctor in Mexico who's also introducing alternative medicine and homeopathy to med students and using it practically to help people with cleft lips and what was the other condition you said cleft lip and and cleft palate and the cleft palate and just as a curious thing, because I'm a hypnotherapist, do you also talk about hypnotherapy or um, hypnosis? No, I'm sorry. I don't, but I promise I will add it to my classes. I'll talk about it. <laughs> well, I'm doing <laughs> a present it also works. <laughs> I'm doing a presentation soon to explain how it works for the People's Health Alliance. And that's going to be recorded. So I can send that to you afterwards as well, because, um, yeah, I believe that I explain quite scientifically how it works. Um, when you're talking to the med students about homeopathy, Reiki, acupuncture, um, all these different modalities, uh, do you also explain the connection between, for example, energy healing and science? Yes. Well, I talk very few about it because that's new for them. They never teach you in med school about energy. So we it's like if I'm talking about witchcraft. <laughs> uh, actually, a lot of people want me out of the university because of the things I teach, because homeopathy, they think it's not scientific. 
but of course it's scientific, it's proven, it's their articles, so they don't know about it, so they think it's not uh, scientific. But I talk about it a little bit. I teach them about the scientific articles on homeopathy, on acupuncture, on meridians, on feta healing, on meditation even, how meditation can heal you and can lower anxiety and depression and all the things that they have no idea about it. So I just introduced about a little bit about it uh, because they are very, very new to it and sometimes they're skeptical yeah and there's a lot of i don't know about the others but i mean obviously you do but i know there's a lot of literature and a lot of research on the benefits of meditation it's fascinating so meditation i know about um energy work also a little bit reiki a bit uh acupuncture a bit is it is it possible for you to, in a kind of a very short, because of the time of the interview way, uh, explain to the viewers how homeopathy works? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, homeopathy was uh, discovered by the German uh, doctor, medical doctor, Samuel Hahnemann. He, was, um, he wasn't pleased with the medicine in his time because they only healed with amputations and with bleedings. So he was like, this is not the way to heal. So he knew 11 languages and he was translating a book about Materia Medica. And this book uh, was talking about this bark, a bark from Peru that it's called China bark. And the book talked about the, the Indians in Peru took this China bark when they had uh, diarrhea and fevers and they were sick. So he got intrigued about it and he got uh, the bark. I don't know how, how because there was no Amazon at <laughs> that time. So he got this bark and he made himself um, like a tea of China. And he started having this China officinalis tea. And he started experimenting the symptoms that were described in the book he was uh, translating. And he was like, oh, this is uh, unusual. Well, I'm going to give it to my wife to see what happens. So he started experimenting with his wife and his kids. He had nine, uh, nine kids, so he had quite <laughs> a group to experiment with. And they all had the same symptoms. They all had fevers. They all had joint pains. They all had diarrhea. So he said, maybe, maybe this is not uh, uh, rare. Maybe this is what it's supposed to happen. If you're not sick and take this plant, or in this case, this bark, you're gonna have the same symptoms that uh, if you're sick and you are gonna take that bark, like if you had fever and diarrhea and joint pains, and you took that bark, you were gonna heal like the Indians from Peru, the indigenous people from Peru. So he started experimenting with uh, a, a wide variety of things, mainly plants like Arnica and some minerals and some animals. And he saw that if you're healthy and take the remedy, you're gonna have the symptoms that we're gonna give you like the clue of the symptoms you're gonna heal in a sick person. So that way he discovered homeopathy. So homeopathy works with the energy of the plants or the mineral or the animal that the remedy it's made out. So it's not that you're taking the arnica leaf. No, you're taking the, the energy that it's in the arnica leaf. And that energy is the one that it's gonna have an impact on your own energy to start healing naturally, okay? So that's the way he saw because um, he took also knowledge from Hippocrates. He took out like all the books from Hippocrates and Hippocrates said that nature was the best way to heal. So it wasn't just talking about nature like plants around us, but our own nature. We have our own um, way to heal. So homeopathy enhances this natural way of healing. So whenever you're sick and take homeopathy, 
this energy containing this remedy is going to awaken the um, energy within you that it's called um it's like the the key in the chinese medicine right uh, this energy is going to awaken for the all your body to have a balance again and get rid of the symptoms and have health again so mainly that's how homeopathy works <laughs> yeah from from what i've heard correct me if i'm wrong and i'm probably using the wrong words but you take uh the the thing which is causing the illness uh and then you you distill it i'm not sure if distill it is the right word but you distill it you purify it so that you've purified it to the smallest form before it doesn't exist anymore as far as i understand it which means that from a scientific perspective, there's nothing left in there. And what you've got left, as you're describing it, is the energy, the, the, the purest form, if you like, of what it is once you've removed everything else from it. And that's what heals the symptom, no, heals the problem uh, with the actual, with, with the energy of the thing which is causing the problem in the first place. Is that more or less right? <laughs> Correct. You're, as I said, you're taking the energy of the plant, the animal, or the mineral. When you make the remedy, you dilute it. It's diluted many, 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 many times. So, for example, you take the arnica and, like, make this mix with alcohol, and from that tincture, you're gonna take one drop of the tincture and you dilute it in 99 drops of alcohol. And then you shake it a hundred times. <laughs> of course, now there are machines that make that, but Hahnemann made it like uh, manually. So you shake it a hundred times and then you have the first centesimal potency. From that potency, you're gonna take one drop and put it in 99 drops of alcohol and then shake it again and then you have the second centesimal and you do it over and over until you have the sixth centesimal the 30th centesimal or the 200 or the 1000 or the 1 million so of course when you get to the 30 there is no more um materia there's no more of the arnica there's only the energy and that's why the halopathy world thinks it doesn't work because there's nothing. Of course, you cannot measure the arnica. There's no, there are no grams of arnica, but there's the energy. And of course, you can uh, measure it with specialized machines that uh, measure energy. There's a um, big laboratory in Las Vegas that has these amazing um, things to measure energy. So now you can measure the energy from every single homeopathic remedy and every remedy has its own energy. So that's the wow. way it's, it's healed. And yes, of course, they say there's no um, remedy on that because no, there's no material, but energy. Yeah, from the materialistic world or the material world, when you're exactly. looking at the physical world, and you exclude everything which is not physical or material, which is why, you know, this is, I think, in the future as we now move, well, not the near future, I would say, as we move into a new reality, a new earth, as people are now calling it. Um, quantum physics, quantum mechanics is going to become more and more the new way of uh, reclaiming our health, I think, and, and the acknowledgement that what we cannot see, the energy that we can't see actually is there and that it actually has um, an effect on all of us, which we, we kind of know anyway. It's just that we haven't done studies on it because as you say, you know, it's all focused on the allopathic medicine and it's focused on what we can actually physically see. So it's fascinating. I also explain hypnotherapy from a quantum physics perspective as well as well as from brainwave states when it comes to uh, hypnosis. Um, so from a, 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 as a medical doctor then, and during COVID, 
Uh, were you able to keep practicing? Was there mandates for the doctors? And also with you being in a working um, as a medical doctor, um, uh, were you able to say, no, I don't want to take or did you have to kind of stop working for a while? I didn't stop working. I have uh, the patients from the uh, Centro Suma, but I also have my private patients that only take homeopathy. And in terms of the vaccine, well, it was mandatory for all the university, for all the professors, for all the students in the hospitals, for all the doctors. So I didn't like that part, but yeah, mainly it was mandatory here, but there's a lot of people who didn't get it. Maybe to just add so that we can cut a little bit out. So even though that there are many doctors uh, potentially who chose not to have the injection, um, like my friend in Colombia. Yeah, actually, all of my friends in homeopathy world, I mean, all of my friends, all of my teachers, uh, they didn't get the shot. Um, I mean, we're a big school, maybe, I don't know, like 500 people. So that didn't get the shot. Okay, but wait, I can't put that in there either. <laughs> you can, yeah, yeah that, that, that part, you can use it. <laughs> this. <laughs> so now... Maybe then talking a little bit about the uh, Centro Suma. Um, you said that there's psychiatrists working there, doctors working there, a whole myriad of different professions. Um, could you explain a, a little bit more about this Centro? Sure. So Centro Suma began because um, I live in a poor country, not everybody. It has uh, this accessibility to health and especially for surgeries. So we made this centro for the kids that were not able to pay for a surgery. So for example, in a private uh, hospital, these surgeries are about uh, 20,000 pesos, which is quite a large amount of money. And for these kids, they will only pay what they can. If they can pay, I don't know, 2,000 pesos, of course they pay that. If they can pay 5,000 pesos, they pay that. So we made this center in order for help these kids to get these surgeries. Because uh, there were a lot of kids that were, weren't, ha weren't having this surgery because one, their parents didn't know that this could be corrected by the surgery. And second, because of money. So this is a way to help all these kids to have this surgery. So we have uh, plastic surgeons, we have uh, nutritionists, we have uh, a dentist, we have uh, maxillof maxillofacial uh, surgeons, we have um, psychologists, we have speech therapists, so there's this integrative center for them to have like all the specialties together in the same place and with a very, very, very low cost. And if they cannot pay anything, like if they live in a very, very, uh, in a place where they have no money and it's very difficult for them to pay, they will not pay anything, anything. Sometimes we can pay for them to uh, have to take the bus to go to the center, to, to, to travel two or three or five hours from one place to our center to have the, the treatment that they need. And it's not just the surgery. Of course, surgery is what you see. Now they, they don't have the cleft, right? <laughs> and now they can talk better and now they can fit better. But it's not just the cleft, it's everything. It's like that they can... Um, talk good, that they can have, um, they can feel good, that they can have a normal life because sometimes they are bullied in schools because they have this cleft in their lip. Now, of course, with the mask, not everyone sees the, the cleft, but without it, everyone like, oh, look at that kid. Look, he looks funny. He speaks funny. He looks different. So we help them to have a normal life. 
Oh, you've just found a positive for the masks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, so, uh, it, so in I, I know because I've got friends from Brazil, and I know, and I, I I'm a resident of uh, Portugal. Uh, favela, is it? Uh, what is favela in uh, in Me in Spanish in Mexico? Is it barrio? No. Well, barrio it's like uh, this place where poor people live but they have uh, water and they have electricity and they have sanitary um, things. But there are some people that, that live like way, way, way away from cities, like in small towns or up the hills or things like that. And they don't have water. They don't have electricity, of course, no internet and no sanitary conditions. And you also treat those children as well? Yes, we treat them all. Wow. And do you, are you working, are you and the other professionals working there, working voluntarily or? Yes, uh, we all work um, as a nonprofit. We're a nonprofit organization and none of the people or the health professionals that work there, we don't have any salary. We do it for the love for it. Of course, the, we need uh, money for the secretary and the, like the, the things going on around there, but not for the health professionals. We all work there for free. Well, you're a very busy, a very busy woman. <laughs> I, I just found out recently, I'm not allowed to say person. Apparently that's uh, to do with, because of common law, I have to say man or woman, uh, but you're, you're very, very busy. And also, so yes, could, so at the end, I'm going to ask you to share the links and also I'm going to put the links to everything that you do in the description. But maybe now is a really nice time also because, you know, people can donate and they can check out the website. So what is the website for the Centro Suma? Sure, it's www.centrosuma.org. And of course, they can donate there. They can donate for a surgery or they can donate, I don't know, $10. And that those $10 are going to help for some treatment for any of the kids that we have there. So we would be very thankful and grateful if you could donate for these costs. Yeah. And also, if you're doing it really, you know, the children pay whatever they can, then then whatever little people can give is really going to potentially change a child's life. So that's exactly. it's really um, inspiring to donate to something directly when you know that it's really going to make a difference. Uh, I'm going to donate. I've decided. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now then moving on, I think, to uh, the, the kind of the final question, which is people, well, actually, before we move on to the final question, so what is the situation now in Mexico? You know, we hear, for example, in England at the moment, everything has gone back to normal. And in uh, other countries, it's not like that at all. So, uh, and we don't hear that much about what it's like in Mexico unless we have friends who are there and can tell us. So what is it like in Mexico um, at the moment? Well, so everything is back to normal, as you said. Kids in school still uh, have to wear masks. Uh, they ask you, of course, for the vaccine certificate for kids to be in school. Um, what else? You need to have the masks on any health uh, facility, uh, that's mainly it. Yeah, well, the, the, the needing proof of vaccine to go to school, I mean, obviously you said that in Mexico and in other um, countries in Central and South America, it's possible to... But still, it's a, it's a very kind of... Um, yeah, sad, sad state of affairs, really, a sad situation when people need to either or take an injection to just take your child to school. So, um, OK, so then that leads quite nicely then to my final question, which is then people that are watching this, people that are feeling doom, feeling that, you know, we don't we don't stand a chance what advice would you give to the people that are watching this from your experience well my advice would be follow your heart follow your intuition because there's always a way out 
even though they make uh, they want to make you there's a way to don't do it. Um, so in this conditioned uh, freedom, there's a way to do it. <laughs> and if you feel that you need to heal with allopathy, okay, but do it for the right reasons, not because they are mandating to use it. But if you feel that there's another way, a healthier way, it doesn't have to be homeopathy. It can be any other kind of therapy. But uh, follow your intuition. If it's telling you that uh, that treatment is not the right for you, if it, your intuition is telling you if another uh, treatment or another surgery is not right for you, follow your heart because sometimes they just want you to follow their rules instead of following your rules. And your rules is to follow your intuition, to follow your heart. I agree a hundred percent. And what's fascinating also is that many people that I've been, in fact, it's a common theme when I ask this question is so many people say, you know, follow your intuition, connect to your intuition. How do you connect to your intuition? Some people watching this will be saying, great, I need to follow my intuition. But how do I know it's my intuition and how do I know it's my head? I don't know the difference. How do you connect <laughs> to your intuition? Well, when I connect, I try to go to a quiet place uh, surrounded by nature and I close my eyes and I put my hands on, over my heart, my heart chakra, and just uh, focus on my breathing. And sometimes I just start like saying thank you like Ho'oponopono, thank you, but just thank you. And I can just like tell my problem and start for the answer to come. And the answer could be like this fast or the answer sometimes comes in a song that you listen on the radio, in a, in a newspaper that you watch when you're walking around, in, I don't know, in an ad from Facebook. There's always an answer, but if we are not aware that our angels or that our superior beings or our God or however you want to call them, it's out there helping us, well, we're not um, allowing it. So just be open to have the answer. There's always an answer, always, but we have to be aware of it. Beautiful, yeah. And, um being open to the fact that there's more going on out there that we cannot explain and that people have been talking about this for thousands of years. And unless all of those people that have been talking about this for thousands of years were all crazy, there's probably something in it. And so trust in it, trust in the knowledge that's going to come to you through, as you said, God, angels, guides, whatever it is, higher knowledge, higher knowing. And the answer, um, I would describe it as a kind of a knowing, right? You just kind of know, like, it's like a, people describe it like a download. It's like, oh, yeah, this is what I should do. Exactly. Great. So what do you see now moving forward is the, is the future for um, medicine and doctors and health moving forward into the future? Honestly, I think that this pandemic is making noise on the pharmaceutical industry. And I believe that in some years, um, it will fall apart. <laughs> Honestly, that's what I believe. So um, I'm hoping that. <laughs> uh, so that's what I think that it will happen eventually. I don't know if in two years or in 20 years, but I think that that it's going to happen because now so now we have a problem on the pharmaceutical side and how they're going to like to defend it and that we're going to see that it's all like this mafia <laughs> Right. So that's what I think. And that's going to open up to all the other alternative medicines to grow. Oh, since uh, acupuncture that has been here for thousands of years 
or homeopathy that has been here for 200 years, or I don't know, meditation and all these strategies or techniques that have been here, but we just have forgotten to use it. Yeah, I'll just add, uh, because I'm a fan of hypnosis, <clears throat> hypnotherapy was completely normal in the 1800s until allopathic medicine came along and then took over. Um, so, and what's really interesting is now during this time with this whole last three years, there are so many people coming forward, not only now willing to talk about um, things that were once cons considered conspiracy, and people are having open conversations about these things, these conspiratorial uh, you know, information, but also modalities, different healing modalities. There's so many people coming forward now and saying, I offer this, I do this, I do this. So I agree with you. I think as these old systems start to crumble, and I also don't know the time frame, but it's happening, then the other things are going to come forward and are going to be the replacement for that. Great. Is there anything else you would like to say to people watching this um, about any of the topics that we've talked about before you share your links with the people? No, no, I think I said everything. You just have to follow your intuition to get in the right path. And remember, we are always in the right uh, place and always in the right time. Ali, you like to be called Ali. Could you please uh, share with us the links to the various places where we can find you? And they will also be in the description as well. Sure, you can find me on Facebook as Doctora D-R-A, Alejandra Guante. That's my um, doctor webpage. And also uh, Centro Suma on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We are like that, Centro Suma. And our webpage that I already shared, www.centrosuma.org. Thank you so much for talking with me. I had no idea before talking to you that you are the only doctor in Mexico also teaching alternative medicine in one of the most pr prestigious med schools in Mexico. So uh, it's been a fascinating conversation and I really look forward to finding out how we can collaborate moving forward also thank you thank you for asking me about for this and i also had a great time sharing with all of you about not just what i do but what we can all do to have a better place to live it thank you